higher life form, basically anything that comes from a seed. So that was the whole issue then before the Supreme Court, not only the patent infringement case, but the whole rights of farmers, the rights to patent life and control future, the future of life. But before it went to the Supreme Court, this is what else Monsanto had done to us. And a lot of people don't know this. We had the original lawsuit, but then they laid another lawsuit against us after the Federal Court of Appeal for a million dollars that they wanted us to pay them for their legal costs because they, and, and uh, court costs, le uh, disbursement costs, fines, punitive damage, and so on. So we had to go to court and fight that also at the same time. When Monsanto found out that how we were financing our legal bills by putting mortgages and liens on our land, then they tried, uh, with liens and caveats, they tried to seize our house, they tried to seize our farmland, they tried to seize all our farm equipment to stop us. So we had three battles with Monsanto by the time it went to the Supreme Court. Now what the Supreme Court ruled was this. First of all, on the issue of patent infringement which Monsanto laid against us originally. They said we would not have to pay Monsanto no money whatsoever. And that was a major victory because if we would have had to pay Monsanto a million dollars or two million dollars, we wouldn't be here today. But what was not fair, the Supreme Court ruled, Monsanto has to pay their legal bill, uh, my wife and I would have to pay our own legal bill. Monsanto's legal bill was over two million dollars, our legal bill by that time was over four hundred thousand dollars. And believe me, it's a lot easier for a corporation a billion dollar corporation to pay two million dollars for a test case which they admitted to see how far they could exercise control over farmers under patent law than for my wife and I as a farmer to stand up for farmers rights to pay four hundred thousand dollars and that was not right. Now the issue of who owns life and this is what they ruled and I'll give the exact wording. Monsanto's patent on a gene is valid. And wherever that gene arises, by whatever means, in any higher life form, they own and control that higher life form. Now just stop and think about that. If you can patent a seed or a plant, what about a bird, bee, animal, and even a human being? So now we've got more problems than what we have answers. As I said, can you go all the way with the patents on a gene to human life? Supreme Court of Canada said it has to go back to the Parliament of Canada to sort this whole thing out. First of all, bring in new legislation, new laws to pr protect the rights of farmers especially in regards to being able to use and retain their control of their seed. And first of all, and secondly, that life should not be patented. Now I should maybe just brief, before I go any farther, I should maybe tell you a little bit the effects of that patent. Monsanto has a patent on a gene. They do in Canada, you cannot get a patent on a seed or a plant. You cannot own a seed or plant through patent law. But if you have a patent on a gene, and the gene is inserted by whatever means into a higher life form, like a seed or plant, they have control of that seed or plant. So it's a back door way of coming in to control higher life forms if you have a patent on a gene a higher life and put it into a higher life form. So what did we do after that? We watched our fields very closely and in 2005 we found again that one of our fields that we were then were using for mustard research was contaminated and we felt it was Monsanto's uh, uh, Roundup Ready uh, rapeseed again or canola. And we did testing and eventually we were certain almost of that. We notified Monsanto that we said to them, one of our fields we are sure are contaminated again with your GMO can canola. And all through the court cases of seven years, Monsanto had said, all a farmer has to do if he thinks he's contaminated, notify them and they'll come out and check and if it is contamination, they will remove it. So okay, we notified Monsanto, they did come out, did testing, and two days later they notified us in writing, yes indeed, it was their GMO canola game in that field. And they asked us what we wanted done with it. And we said, 
We told them that we're now doing mustard research. We want all those plants removed out of this 50 acre field, research field, by hand. And Monsanto agreed to do that, to remove all their GMO reefs or canola out of this field. So two days later, I came home one day and if I ever seen my wife upset, it was at that time. And here she showed me a document. And it was a document from Monsanto and they called it a release form. And in that release form it said this, before they would remove the contamination, my wife and I would have to sign this document. And in this document, this is what it said. My wife, myself, or any member of our family could never ever take Monsanto to court again for the rest of our lives, no matter how much they contaminated us in the future on this field. That was one issue. The second issue, a gag order. We would not be allowed to talk to anyone, to the press or to our neighbors. In fact, I wouldn't even be able to talk to you here this afternoon that, uh, about the terms or conditions of the uh, contamination or cleanup. And we said to Monsanto, there is no way that we're ever going to give up our freedom of speech to a corporation. And there's too many people in our countries have given their lives for freedom of speech. And we will never ever sign our freedom of speech away to you. And we would not sign the document. Monsanto said, if you don't sign the document, we will not remove the contamination. We said, okay, we will remove the contamination. And then we received another fax from Monsanto, and this is what they said. We wish to remind you that the, rape or the canola plants on your field, our contamination is not your property. It's, not, it's our property, and you're not free to do with it what you want. So we said to Monsanto, we are going to do what we want. Get your contamination, your trespassing, off our fields. You refuse to do it unless we sign the document. The battle was on. My wife and I had to decide again, do we want another six or seven years of legal battle with Monsanto? We made that decision, yes, we would take Monsanto to court for the cleanup costs. So we went and I got two neighbors to help me to remove the, the plants from this field, from this 50 acre field, and I paid these neighbors $640. So we sent Monsanto the bill for $640. And Monsanto said, unless you sign the document, we will not pay the bill. So then we decided, okay, we're going to take Monsanto to court. And the judge agreed with us, and he issued Monsanto a, a, a summons for $640. Can you imagine the embarrassment to a billion-dollar corporation being in court for a $640 bill? So it took two years to go to court, and in March of this year, uh, it went to court. And when the court started, Monsanto came up, I got up, and they had a check in hand for $640 plus $20 court costs and paid the contamination for the contamination cleanup. That was a major victory for ourselves. But not only for ourselves, because now it has set a precedent that if a farmer is contaminated anywhere in the world, whether it's Bayer, Syngenta, Monsanto, you have an avenue to take these companies to court and pay for the cleanup costs. So like I said, after 10 years of legal battle, it was a major victory for my wife and myself. So that, 